Hey, good evening, everybody. I hope you guys have had a great day. Um, we are still in Let Go of Your Fear, and we are now in chapters 9 and 10. So tonight we're going to kick it off with chapter 9, um, Making Time for Prayer. And so in this chapter, um, again, Gary is exploring the avenues and really the um, the the relatableness of Christ with us and he's showing us that when sometimes we question whether or not um, maybe we want to pray or the time we spend in prayer we're reminded that um, this is an important thing and it's something that Jesus sets the example for us for so it's not just that there's an expectation or that we should do it um, but it's something that he did as well and so we're back, of course, amongst the crowds and the time that he is spending and this long day he's put in of teaching and sharing his, his father's love with these people. And after what has probably got to be a completely exhausting day, I mean, let's face it, he fell asleep in a boat that was in the middle of a raging storm already. Um, he's going to make it a point to go spend some time in prayer with his father and it's not quick and short and he understands the importance and that conversation and just um the mission that he is set forth and so i love um on page let's see 85 i can't read some of this print it's too small for me um but as it says an encounter with jesus is meant to be shared with others what do we do that we are doing much more than sharing details about an event? We are sharing Jesus himself. As the old saying goes, you may be the only Jesus someone sees today. And so, again, he's talking to this massive group of people. And think of how that carries forth and how they've now had this amazing encounter with this man. And... It, it's like wildfire it, you you know we we see it all day these things on the media social media um how they just get perpetuated and they spread like wildfire and so hearing him come to speak to them just imagine the amount of people that are going to be reached by this story that that's coming and here we are over 2000 years later and look how many people have now read this amazing story and so not only are we reminded that we need to spend time in prayer and reflect each day but it's also our job to witness and it's our job to speak of Christ and that sounds um it can be kind of unfamiliar territory for us Catholics. Um, it feels a little odd. It feels a little um, nails on a chalkboard, just kind of like ugh, out of your skin. But, you know, it's such a beautiful thing. And it doesn't have to be this um, crazy um, hellfire and brimstone type recounting of our um, time with Christ. It's really just sharing the good things that have happened in our lives and with that the struggles and how things have been turned around and so we shouldn't be afraid to have these conversations and in turn what I love about this chapter is when we're brought back to prayer our prayer is something that can really help us with this and so Gary really starts to talk about um, what does your prayer life look like and so Again, that question to you of, do you have a routine? And if not, um, how does some of that establishment look like? And so um, I would encourage you to pick a time of day that works for you. And like he says, for some, it's first thing in the morning. For others, it's the middle of the day. Um, and then some of us, it's late at night. And I know for me, um, the older I've gotten, I feel like I'm still figuring my prayer life out. And what I mean by that is sometimes I feel like I have so much I want to say and I have no idea how to say it. And so I turn to familiar prayers. And so um, that's what I did for the longest time. And then I would ask for those intentions. And then here more recently in the past year, um, I've found the rosary and just how much peace the rosary brings me. 
And with that, I have learned to pray what's in my heart and kind of try to um, get my words out a little bit better and have more of a conversation with God. And it's still a work in progress. It's always going to be. Um, but I find the more that I practice it, the more comfortable I become. And so I think finding out your style of prayer and, and what your communication feels like. But the other thing that I love is, and again, this is new for me in the past year, is finding a place to pray. And do you have a place in your home? And we've talked about this um, before, some of the, the book club members, about maybe it's in your car, or, you know, it's adoration. And I think those things are all great. But you want to think of a place that you can go to daily and especially when you're trying to establish a routine so gary talks about his living room chair um for me that it's kind of two places and one is my office which you guys see me do a lot of videos from um, i'm not there right now um but that is one of my places where i've created my merry garden and i just feel very um i feel very safe and just um secure in that spot. The other one is we have a recliner in our bedroom. And again, it's just another quiet place for me to go. Um, I do a lot of reading there. I've rocked my babies there. It's just a very peaceful place for me. And the beauty and not saying the other places like going to adoration and that aren't good because they absolutely are and you should continue to do it. But if it's not a place that you can get to every single day or easily, I challenge you to find a space um, in addition to that is easy for you to to sit in each day. And so um, always have that, and especially when you're trying to establish this type of routine. So just really think about that and and what that looks like and how you can make that more of a practice for yourself. So as we wrap up this chapter, um, we're going to go through these reflection questions here of how do you think those in the crowd felt after being miraculously fed by Jesus? What do you think they told their friends? Examine your own desire to share Jesus with others. What can you learn from your desire or lack of desire to discuss him? How structured is your prayer life? Are you ever willing to just hang out with Jesus? Why or why not? I love that. Let's just hang out with Jesus. And then the last question is, do you feel, have a favorite place to pray? If so, discuss how it helps you to feel the Lord's presence. And so as we um, kind of navigate through chapter 9, of course, we're going into chapter 10, and it's titled Another Storm. And it's this reminder that just because we get through one storm, doesn't mean it's done and over with. And it doesn't mean that every storm is going to look the same, whether it's how we come through it, um, what we, what the storm is. But the one thing that rings true is that Jesus is always with us through it. Now his presence is going to change because it's going to cater to what we need. And I love that Gary brings up, um, Lazarus again in this and he starts to bring in the wedding feast at Cana and he draws on this um, importance of these miracles took place for a very specific reason and at a specific time because if the timing wasn't right it, it it wouldn't have the lasting impact it wouldn't have been what it was meant to be and so can you imagine that if at the wedding feast of Cana, if the wine hadn't quite run out yet, and like he said, Mary's running around saying, hey, everybody slow down and we need, you know, it, it wouldn't land. But Jesus's timing was so perfect and it had run out and you're sitting there and you're looking. And of course, it's such a, a huge thing in that time and um, can really be impactful for um the families that are hosting this wedding and especially the bride's family. And so you see this amazing miracle of water that's turned into wine. I mean, there was not a drop left and what a statement, what an impact for the first miracle of Christ. And to know that 
it was time. It was finally time. And that Mary knew it was time, you know, this, this divineness that was being set forth. And so again, same thing with Lazarus. Um, Jesus could have absolutely been there sooner. He could have prevented Lazarus's death, but would have it had landed the same for all of us. And that's what we have to remember in our lives. And it's really hard when we're going through that storm at that point, because we just want it taken care of right here, right now. We don't want the raging storm to keep happening. We don't want um, to keep going through these difficult times. We just want it fixed. And that's our human nature. But what we have to realize is there's a lot of things that are happening in the background. And again, it goes back to whether there's a lesson that we need to learn, whether it leads us to something bigger and better. Um, there's multiple multiple reasons for why Jesus is working the way that he does. But again, it takes us back to, we have to trust that. And that is so hard. It's so against our, like I said, our human nature. And it, um, for me, it shows my impatience of, um, again, wanting what I want right now and for things to be taken care of. And so, I think the more that what I like about these two chapters is we sit in prayer, we hang out with Jesus, we um, have this dedicated time with him. These things these that are occurring when we're going through a difficult time are maybe a little bit more evident to us and how it's being revealed and what is happening when we have that strong relationship with Jesus because we have an awareness of what he can do and what he is doing for us. And I think that also takes into account why it's so important that we witness to others, not only how he has impacted our life, but who he is and what he can do for us. And his, his never wavering love and grace for us. And just the fact that he wants us to um, be be in heaven with him, you know, what our, what our eternal, um, end looks like. And so there's such a, a great connection between these chapters. And so what we have to remember is our prayer life. And again, it may not be pretty because again, I feel like mine is sometimes a jumbled mess. Um, but it's, it's the fact, it's the intent and God knows what's on our heart and it, it, it's getting better. Like I said, it's getting better. Um, how are we witnessing to others? And then how are we recognizing where Jesus is in these storms? Like I said, it's not that he's bowed out. It's not that he's not there and not ready to, to help us, but we have to recognize the place, the time and the place and what we can learn from it. So here in chapter 10, let me go on ahead and get to my reflection questions here for the end. But it says, how do you typically react when Jesus is silent in your life? Consider the apostles as they were sailing on the sea, encountering a storm. They had no idea that Jesus was spending time in prayer. And it says, spend some time thinking about how Jesus could be working behind the scenes in your life too and discuss. Number two, think of a time in your life when you felt trapped. What did it feel like? How did you respond while it was happening? While you were in the situation, did God feel close or distant? And the last question, how do you feel about the idea that Jesus always shows up on time? Do you agree or disagree? Discuss the pros and cons of the fact that he never seems to show up early. Do you wish he would? So a lot of food for thought on these two chapters, um, a lot of things to practice and put in play. So what I would challenge you um, this week is think about that prayer space and your prayer life and see if you can't develop a routine if you don't have one already. And the second thing is, can you witness to somebody what short story can you share of, of your life on how Christ has made an impact? And again, that one might be a little more difficult for some of us, but go outside your comfort zone. See what happens. So thanks so much, guys. I hope you have a great night.